That's a really bad sign. Hey, I'm Kale, and welcome to your weekly ticket work from home edition. We finally get to talk about Dune. That's because Vanity Fair has released our first look at Timothy Chalamet in Dune. He is playing Paul Atreides, a privileged child who is raised by a powerful family who is entrusted with the protection of a valuable asset. The film, of course, is an adaptation of the classic sci-fi novel from Frank Herbert, and it will be directed by Denis Villeneuve, who we know from Arrival and Blade Runner 2049. This is also his first time producing one of his own films, and the movie comes out December 18th. If we're in quarantine any longer, my hair is going to start looking like Timothy Chalamet's. It's already like curling around the sideburns. And in other release news, James Gunn, who will be directing the third Guardians of the Galaxy film and The Suicide Squad, said that neither movie will be delayed due to the coronavirus and both films are slated to release in 2021. I will now pause so you can do your fist pump. But now on to some newly announced remakes. Stephen King's classic vampire novel Salem's Lot will be getting a film adaptation from director Gary Dauberman. Gary Dauberman is best known for Annabelle Comes Home and writing the screenplay for Warner Brothers' It and It Chapter 2. So, I mean, they got somebody who knows their way around some Stephen King, so that's great. The classic horror film Hellraiser will also be getting a reboot. David Bruckner is teaming up with Spyglass Media to remake the classic horror film. Ben Collins and Luke Petrosky, his writing team on his latest film, The Night House, will be writing the screenplay. All right, well, if you're stuck inside and you're still looking for something to watch, well, that's why we're here. We've got this segment of the show, and we've got a special guest today. Fandango correspondent Nikki Novak is going to help us find something to watch. Nikki, what do you got for us? I have got a movie that I missed in theaters in January, but apparently I was one of the only ones because it made $425 million at the box office, and that is Bad Boys for Life. Now, I have to admit, I didn't run to the theater to see this one because I kind of, I saw the first two. I think I saw them a long time ago. And if you're like me and you're like, yeah, I remember the franchise. It's kind of cool. I don't know if I want to watch it at home. This is a perfect movie for right now because it is a complete escape. It'll make you laugh. It's over the top. It's produced, of course. The first two were directed by Michael Bay, who loves explosions and big action and all that kind of thing, which right now just seems right. It's just great to watch and just lose yourself in, in all the jokes that they make in between. And I think that's what really works for this movie. I think we all know Martin Lawrence and Will Smith have great chemistry together. First of all, it gave me so much 90s nostalgia watching this movie. But the reason why it really worked for me is nowadays when we see action movies like I love I love Fast and Furious I love Mission Impossible but these are not necessarily comedians they're action stars these two reminded me that they're primarily funny guys that are thrown into an action movie and the chemistry between them has been described by Will Smith as magic and that's exactly what it is I also love because I think we're all missing being able to travel and I love traveling Miami is the third character in this movie it is such an escape the blue waters the sun shines the carefree attitude just put me in a good mood highly recommend this one what do you got kale my suggestion is happy death day now you might have overlooked this one because you thought it was a straight horror film but it but it's not it's actually more of a comedy it's going to subvert your expectations on that and it's well worth your time and now is the chance to catch up on it uh it's about a college girl named tree who gets murdered but wakes up in her bed and relives the same day again just to get murdered again this happens over and over and over as she looks for the murderer it yeah it's basically groundhog's day and jessica roth who is the main character who plays tree is incredible she's hilarious and if you've already seen the first and you haven't seen it there is a second one called happy death day to you if you haven't seen either i recommend a double feature they're both fantastic and the second one Man, they've got some high concept ideas, but it's so well worth a watch. Uh, I was saying earlier that I, uh, I watched it on a Valentine's Day date, the second one, and we were just like this the whole time, like, what is going on? Looking at other people being like, what, what is even, what is this? It's fantastic. It's hilarious. I think it's some levity that, that we all need right now. Um, but thank you again so much, Nikki. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. I know you love props, by the way. I do. And I saw your noodles last week, and guess what? I got some Miami 
1990s bad boys with the gold <laughs> rim shades for you. So let's go out with this. Can I watch Happy Death Day like this on a date? You can. On a Hold on. Date? I have... <laughs> there we go. No. There we go. I went full nerd with it. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. And available to watch at home today, underwater. Gotta get to the station. How did we even get there? We walk up. We're just gonna walk with insufficient oxygen across the bottom of the ocean. You don't know what's out there. Disaster strikes more than six miles below the ocean surface when water crashes through the walls of a drilling station. Led by their captain, the survivors realize that their only hope is to walk across the seafloor to reach the main part of the facility. But what's out there? The film was directed by William Eubank and stars Kristen Stewart, Vincent Cassell, and T.J. Miller. And available to watch at home this Friday is Wendy. Remember the voice in your head? The one that said, sneak away. Crazy! Wendy, wait! The classic story of Peter Pan is wildly reimagined in this Ben Zeitlin directed drama. Lost on a mysterious island where aging and time have come unglued, Wendy must fight to save her family, her freedom, and the joyous spirit of youth from the deadly peril of growing up. Director Ben Zeitlin also auditioned non-actors during a year-long process to cast the film. All right, everyone, now is your chance to leave us a comment and let us know what you're watching, anything you think we should catch up on, and I will see you next week.